Hello, my friend. As you can see, I am once again in a different filming location. I am over at the lovely Risa Does Makeup's house. She was kind enough to invite me over to her house to hang out and film videos. So today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Uh, Risa and I, we are now, we can both proudly say we are in our 40s. We've made it. Yes. And we thought it would be fun to just kind of talk about advice to our younger selves, makeup related and also not makeup related. And I'd love to know your thoughts on these things down below since we all have different experiences and things. So if that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. So if you're not familiar with Risa, I will be linking her channel down below. She actually helped me to get this gorgeous makeup look. It is a makeup look that you can get in like five to 10 minutes. It's like a work out the door, very quick makeup look. I mean, Even amazing. though it took us probably 40 minutes to do. Well, that's because we were chatting. Right, but I don't think that it actually took that long. And part of it is that Risa is a makeup artist, so she wanted to give a lot of tips and tricks as she was going. So it's a lot of information over there. I will be linking that down below for you so you can check it out and definitely go over there because I think you're really gonna love Risa. <laughs> The first thing, of course, we had to talk about because we both have makeup channels here on YouTube is makeup and makeup advice that we would give ourselves, you know, from from long ago. And Risa, what do, what do you think you would give as, as makeup advice to your younger self? Well, first let me say that being a child of the 80s, I was born in the 70s, you know, kind of came into wearing makeup in the 80s, which was, as we know, a very unattractive time <laughs> to come of age. The hair, the makeup. I mean, I I have very bad skin growing up. I had mm. acne, I, I have oily skin, I had oily skin back then, and the products didn't exist mm. that exist now. My mom was not into makeup at all, mm. but I was from a very, very young age. I didn't really have access, my mom didn't take me to the department store or anything like that. I would babysit and I would take my babysitting money and go to the drugstore. And I would buy like Maybelline Shine Free because it's a shine free and that's what I wanted. And I'd have to say the advice would be do not buy that blue <laughs> eyeliner. Do not buy that frosted pink lip gloss. It clashes with the braces. <laughs> you know, I think everybody has that though. Like mm -hmm. you can look back and say it just was yeah. the time. So it was that the was, back that then. was the trend. That those right. were the times. Right. Well, what would you say to that? Like, what, yeah, I mean, other than like, right? You know, because hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, like, I mean, I think cute. for me, foundation was always something that confused me. That I didn't mm -hmm. really understand. Like, you were so orange back then. Though, yeah, too. and I, I didn't know anything about color matching. Mm -hmm. I just look, grabbed one off the shelf that looked like it might be good and then I applied it with my fingertips and just mm -hmm. spread it all over my face like a moisturizer. What age and, did you start wearing foundation? Uh, I started wearing foundation probably when I was in my late teens, early 20s. Okay, so like, it was like, it was, yeah, wasn't, I don't remember wearing foundation no. as a teenager, even though I could use yeah. it. But again, I, I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have anybody mm -hmm. to kind of yeah, tell me you should wear foundation yeah. or, um, but I would have liked something to cover up. Mm -hmm. You know the pimples and yeah, all that, that would have been nice. I know CoverGirl was my jam. Yeah, and it's it's smelled Maybe. like yeah. Mine mine was the CoverGirl, the triangular shaped bottle, the clear whatever. The clean makeup. The clean makeup. Clean yes. makeup. Yes. And it had that smell. That had the smell. smell. Yes, exactly, oh exactly. My gosh. But that was that was probably not the best foundation for me. So no. maybe just giving myself some tips on application, I think, is what I would have yeah. done because I didn't. Yeah, if only. YouTube had been around. I know, right? Oh my God, we would have. That's now, why. That's why teenagers, teenagers look know. so good. They do. They look amazing. They like do. you see these thirteen and fourteen year old girls, and they look like supermodels. It's like, where is their ugly stage? <laughs> they don't. Why have one. did they not go through the ugly, gawky stage that we all had right. to live through? Because I think it made us better people. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Let's let's say that. Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, of course, we have to go into skincare and what uh, advice we would give ourselves for skincare. So, Risa, what, thinking back to your teenage self, what would you tell yourself? Put down the sea breeze. Oh, <laughs> Do you remember sea, sea breeze? breeze. The Can we cheers to yes, sea breeze? Cheers to sea breeze. If you think beautiful skin is only something you're born with, get wind of sea breeze. Beautiful skin can be a breeze with sea breeze. The antiseptic invigorates. You and the, the what was this, a buff puff? I didn't have a buff puff. Okay, because I'm still a little bit older than you. Yeah. Five years. So, she doesn't remember the buff puff, but it was like basically sandpaper, <laughs> peach sandpaper. You would kind of like scrub your 
your skin back then it was all about clearly with the astringents and all that yeah. stripping your skin completely so my advice would be <laughs> put down the buff buff and the sea breeze <laughs> and all that and stop treating yeah. my face like i'm scrubbing a toilet seat yeah. now i have a teenage son who suffers with acne and i've tried i tried everything with him i really did because i don't want him to suffer the way i did and you know i bought him the proactive i bought him everything that anybody had ever recommended to me i yeah. we tried He's currently on Accutane. It's going well. He's definitely clearing up. I know some people have said that it takes more than one round. But um, anyway, so far so good. I will do, as I'm sure you're the same, I'll do whatever I can for my child, you know, to make him not have to any suffer any of the things that, that I did. If I could go back in time and say, you know, maybe do some research, you know, or yeah. talk to... Get myself yeah. to a dermatologist, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, because back then you couldn't just Google it. Right. There was no, had, there was no, no Googling. Googling it. Like, you had it's like, like, it's like you had encyclopedia, like Hey, you know, librarian, I'm looking for a book on skincare. Yeah. I don't know. There probably was something if we, we took the time to go right. to the library and ask. Right. There probably was some kind of. It's just amazing text. the knowledge that yeah. people have access to Definitely. today. I mean, obviously, there's conflicting information right. out there on everything mm -hmm. because I'm sure other people will say, oh my God, Accutane, like, why would you do that? But. You know, it's obviously your personal choice what yeah. you do with your child. and Absolutely. And how old is he? He's going to be 17 next yeah, month. Yeah, so he's getting very close to adult age. This isn't yeah. a, a nine-year-old boy. Right. Skin care is a tough thing. Even yeah. as a 45-year-old woman, it's tough yeah. for me. Uh, now, as far as advice for myself, it would just be to use skin care. Because until oh, yeah. I actually didn't start, this may shock you if you weren't, haven't been here for a very long time. When I first started my channel, I was using no skin care. Zero. What? None. And this really? was six years ago. I never, wow. I did not start using skincare until I was, well, I guess it was until about three or four years ago was when I started. I did, even sunscreen? No, I would use sunscreen. Well, okay. no, you know what? I didn't even use sunscreen. Wow. I didn't use anything. I was raised in a time where, and if you've been around for a while, you've heard this, but I was raised in a time where being tan and bronze yes, that was, is true. was attractive and beautiful. And, you know, my family would get on me about being pale. And if, if I wasn't tanned enough in the summertime, my grandmother would say, you look sick, you know, like, and she's been uh, passed, passed away for a long time, but that was the way that I was raised. Right. So skincare, you know, using sunblock was a no, no, because then mm -hmm. you don't get your tan if you use sunblock. Hmm. Um, and you know, I did tanning beds in college. I was big into the tanning beds and sometimes I would use a uh, tanning oil. Sometimes I wouldn't, sometimes I just go in, you know, with no preparation. Oh I, this goodness. was, so advice to myself, Jen, don't do that. T don't go to the tanning bed. Terrible idea. Nobody no go tanning to beds. a tanning do they bed. Even ex I think they still exist. They still exist and people still believe that they, if they yeah. get a base tan then they won't burn yeah. and yeah. they still believe, they don't, they right. don't believe the research right. that says that lot. it is horrible yeah. for you and that you yeah. should never go in them but you know. Yeah. And it, I'll, I'll insert a clip of me talking about my first, my first Q&A, no, I don't think it was a Q&A, I think it was like a 40 beauty questions video. I wasn't even using cleanser on my face. How many times do you wash your face daily? I don't wash my face. I don't wash my face. The only time I wash my face, well, if you can count it washing your face, is splashing water on my face in the shower. Because I have found that when I wash my face, it messes up the pH balance that I got going on, and I get either dry or I get breakouts. I mean, like, bad things happen when I wash my face. And I know that's kind of gross, but I just use water. I wash my face with water and everything's good. I use makeup remover to remove my makeup. That's it. I would tell myself to start anti-aging skincare uh, in, the, in, the, in the 20s. Absolutely. Uh, and sunblock and all the time. Sunblock Forever. People. Sunblock. Forever. The next topic is about college. And I know there's a lot of moms that are now sending their kids off to college for the first time this, in a few weeks or they may already be there. They're probably already there at this point mm -hmm. going to college. I don't know how you feel about your experience. We both went to college. Yes. What was your major, Risa? Um, well, I went to two different schools. I went to the University of Arizona first, and my, uh, my I was actually pre-law. Oh wow! When I first went to Arizona, I wanted to be a lawyer. Wow! You know the Allie McBeal days. You know, yeah. I wanted to be a lawyer. But I started taking the classes that were required for pre-law, and I was so bored. And my roommate mm. at the time was in a fashion merchandising major. Oh. She was required to get Women's Wear Daily, and Vogue. Those were her textbooks, and mine was Canadian government. And I was so bored, and I wasn't doing well, and I just was looking at her, her what she was studying, what I was studying. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this. Yeah. So I switched to fashion merchandising. But then I transferred to Michigan State for a boy. 
Mm. Don't ever do this. Always a boy. Always a boy. They did not have um, fashion merchandising. At Michigan State, it was more of a business degree. It was called merchandise management. But it was under the business school umbrella, which was kind of good. Because while I don't use that degree really in any capacity right now, or even I didn't 10 years ago, uh, well, I sort of did because I had my own boutique. So having that background and about with the buying and all of that, um, it, I feel like having the college education, this is what I tell my kids, it's like it gets you in the door. Mm -hmm. it, when people look at your resume, they see just something about having that degree. And of course, it's not forever. There are plenty of professions out there where you do not need a good degree. Mm -hmm. But sure. I think in my case, it definitely, like when I walked into Giorgio Armani, and I felt like on my resume, having that degree versus everybody else who's going in for, because I was wanting to work at the makeup counter there. Most people that apply for those types of jobs, they don't have that degree. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it made me stand out, I think, from the other applicants. Mm -hmm. I feel like I might, for my kids, like I want them want them to go to college? Do I think everybody needs to go to college? I, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. I think that the biggest mistake that people make with college is going to college not having any idea what the plan is. Having well, yeah, no like, end goal. Like me. Like, no I, was, end like game. I just thought pre-law. But... Right. Exactly. Like no end game. No experience in the field. No talking to anybody that's actually in that field. No visiting anybody in that field. Like trying to... I feel like if you're going to go to college for any kind of career, I think if there's any way that... Uh, kid or anybody going back to college can visit that somebody working in that field mm -hmm. that's maybe their ideal job well, especially at 17 18 years right. old how do you know you at that age you don't it's almost like if your kid doesn't go to a great school mm -hmm. like people kind of look down on it I don't know mm -hmm. if it's just in my world yeah I think it depends on where you live and your current like the people that you live around and yeah. what their kids are doing what the expectation is sometimes parents are like so, oh my child's going to University of California blah blah yeah. blah you know and it's like they're saying it like well where's your child going yeah. and if you say oh they're just going to go to community college at right. first it's almost like you're looked down upon but right. why it's like right. I think that's smart because right. college is so expensive it's insane and you, you know this you know I'm sure but it's it's really something that I feel like kids are pushed into sometimes yeah. before they're necessarily ready and I don't see there's anything wrong with getting prerequisites without mm -hmm. a plan or working but, for a year but but just insane. but forcing a, a, a choice in a career yeah. before you're ready I think is a really really bad idea in my opinion based Definitely on agree. what I've seen um, and you know I was a teacher for 11 years and I loved that career it took me eight years Years to get my degree, my undergraduate graduate degree, because I flip flopped different careers mm -hmm. trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Because I, I, what you do is you go to high school, you graduate, you go to college. That's just what you do. So much money, it's so much time. Yeah, and absolutely. And they're so young to make that decision. Right. You know? And there's some people that know, they know. Yeah, they, of they, course. They, they want to be a doctor. To be. Or they, yeah. And it was there's something they've known for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I, th I would say the majority of people probably don't graduate from high school. I would agree. Yeah. You talk about boys. Well, it could be girls, depending on right. You know, uh, absolutely. Boys, girls, Anyone. Wh whoever you, you, whoever you enjoy spending your time with. We're just relationships. I think because we're both married to men, we'll probably speak yes. about men. But just know that we mean whatever gender is your personal love. Yes. Yes. In general. This is what I've witnessed in my 45 years and seeing marriages, a lot of marriages fail. Know your worth. Myself, because there were times uh, that I didn't know my worth, but I see it a lot in younger, re younger people in their relationships, that they accept behavior that's unacceptable. Mm. Do you find that? Like a mm. lot of women, they make excuses, and men too, I'm sure they do this, they just make excuses for their partner. I don't know, I, I just can't wrap my brain around um, somebody just be you know being treated poorly and I'm not saying like my marriage is not perfect I'm sure yours isn't perfect no. there are times where my husband like he's awesome like 99.7 percent of the time but like there have been times you know sometimes he'll speak to me in a way that I don't think is okay mm -hmm. and I'll say to him like you will not speak to me that way mm -hmm. right. but I feel confident enough to say that and like my advice to you know myself back then when I didn't have that confidence because I think with age comes that confidence right if you're not going to appreciate me, you know. Yeah. So I would say always know your worth and, and that you need to be treated like, you need to be respected. 
right. respect is like number one and mm -hmm. and it's and it should be a partnership i am not into like you know the woman i'll, I'll hear women say oh i do all the house you know i work outside the home but I also do all the cleaning. My husband, you know, wants me to do this and this and this, and he'll take out the garbage once in a while. I'm like, how do you? That's a lot. Accept that. Like, I can't. Yeah. I just, I'm not down with that. That's a lot. And I, I think it comes down to personal preferences too, as far as what you enjoy in your relationship. You know, some women are happy, or and oh, that's men. True. That's true. You know, true. some women and men are happy being the one that does a lot of the housework. Maybe mm -hmm. like my mother. Because they don't do it right. <laughs> exactly, like my mother. <laughs> my husband doesn't wash my clothes because. Yeah, exactly. Throws it's the together. same kind of thing. You know, when I was a kid, my mother would try to give me chores of doing the dishes, but then she would mm -hmm. always redo them because she didn't think that I did them good enough. So why am I going to do the dishes? It's the same right. kind of thing I think in relationships sometimes, right. you know, that sometimes one person in the relationship wants to control that because they enjoy that and that's their role. Right. So I think every relationship is going to be different and everybody's personal preferences are going to be different. You're very positive about advice. that. Yeah. Like well, as far as you're like, you, you know, yeah. whereas I'm like, men are jerks. Yeah. Well, they don't do it up. Yeah. You know? yeah it's one of those things where everyone has their own perspective yeah. on it and you're giving advice to your younger self. Yeah. So my advice advice for my younger self is to not give myself so wholeheartedly to someone that doesn't deserve it. Right. Because I found myself giving my heart and my soul to these guys who just were not interested in that. Mm -hmm. They, they took advantage of that. They, um, you know, they knew how invested I was. So they would do things like, you know, smack me on the butt and say, you know, make me a sandwich woman kind of thing. Like I dated a guy that was like that. And that was my longest relationship before I met my husband. And it was always hanging on for those good times, you know, mm -hmm. because there was a 50% of the time that he was wonderful. You know, and he so was many fantastic. Relationships and are like that. Yeah. Make, and you know, exactly. saying, oh, it's good most of the time. Exactly. So. Exactly. And you hold on for those times. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, for me, you know, just realizing there was one day I just realized I was like, you know what, this is this is as good as it's gonna get, and this is not good enough for me. This is not where I well, want to be. Well, good for you that you and, realized that. that and you... I, it took me about six hours to break up with him. He wouldn't let me out. He wouldn't let me out of the room. Oh my goodness. Um, he kept blocking the door and yelling at me and wouldn't let me out. Um, and I finally got to my Whoa. car and I was crying hysterically because of, did I make the right decision? Did I do the right thing? I've been with them for on and off for like three or four years, which as a 20 year old, that's a long time or yeah. 21 year old. That's a really long time. And I was crying. And then I turned, I said, God, I said, give me, give me a sign that I did the right thing. I just need something. I'm bawling. And I turn on the radio and here it comes, here I go again on my oh, own. Oh, that's awesome. And I, I had tears streaming <laughs> oh, down. My face. Yeah. I had the I had the windows rolled yeah. down and I'm screaming in. I got tears and I was Here I go again on my own. I, I like I almost thought I had to pull over because I was so like I did the right thing. And I think that my biggest advice to myself would be just knowing like you're saying, knowing your value and mm -hmm. knowing that you don't need to put up with that. You don't nope. need the fifty percent you deserve. There are the good people out there. Exactly, there are that. good right. guys. There are right. good women out there. Yeah. There are. They're harder to find. I think, especially now in this age yeah. of the internet and social media, Absolutely. I think it's harder. Yeah. Because everybody, it seems to me like they're looking for what's better. Like they have something good, but they're thinking maybe that girl who slid into my DMs is a little bit better. Maybe yeah. she's a little bit more. You know, it just mm -hmm. seems like. It would be, I feel, uh, bottom line is I feel for people that are single right now. Yes, I do too. Because it's, it's a too. tough world out it there. Is. My best friend is in her 60s and she is single. Oh, and gosh. it's just the watching the men that she, and, I mean, they, they're, they're, it's it's a tough and the six year olds there. probably yeah, want thirty five year olds and she's she's got the the heart of a thirty five year old mm. and she's just she's look these guys just want to sit around all and she's just like she wants to go biking and hiking and yeah. traveling and going so to the she pool needs and, the thirty five year old yeah I know and I'm waiting for her to find that forty fifty <laughs> why year not? old like why not just know, somebody right? to have fun with why not she's amazing I do. Um, I feel for people that have to go through the yes. dating process right now because it is difficult no matter what your age. It's a difficult market out there, you know, trying to find absolutely, absolutely catfishing and all that. We don't oh. have to deal with catfishing. Do you know, I have to tell this story. <laughs> Somebody messaged me on Facebook a couple months ago, this guy, 
and he said, is this you? And it was, it was some um, dating site or something. <gasps> Somebody used my pictures to catfish. You got catfish? I, got, the, I didn't get catfish because I wasn't right. looking well, yeah. for anybody, well, but yeah. somebody used me to yeah. catfish others. Oh and I was a little gosh. bit flattered. You know, it was so funny. Because I wasn't a member of this website, right. I couldn't log in. So I asked the guy who had messaged me, I said, could you screenshot me what you're seeing? Mm -hmm. And so he sent me the screenshot and I was like, <gasps> but I got to say, <laughs> it was pretty awesome that this person had put my age at 28. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Nice. So, so the guy's like, so the guy who messaged me, I said, he's like, so you, he said, so that's not, you know, you. And I said, no, I said, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm married and I'm not 28. <laughs> like, I'm like, sorry, dude. I am. That's nope. So I'm like, funny. Mm -mm. oh my God. So what I ended up doing was I, uh, I went on my Instagram story. It was either oh. my Instagram story or Snapchat, something like that. And I went on and I said, what do I do? Cause I was like, kind of, you feel violated that yeah. somebody's told, stole your pictures and is doing this. And, um, so they messaged me like right away, this company, and they said, we'll take it down and we take this very seriously. Yeah. So it was really good. I'm sure it happens to them all the time. I think of the site, but like it was just like, am I, should I be flattered, freaked out? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's just, That's it's like crazy. you don't know who you're talking to. Right. Yeah, you don't. It's creepy. super creepy. Super creepy. So the last category we want to talk about was friendships and advice to ourselves. So what do you think, Risa? Well, if we're talking about like when we were, I'm going to go back to like my high school years. Yes. It's a good time. I'm going to say, don't worry about being popular, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. trying to fit in. And I mean, I think yeah. that just comes with being in that age. You want to fit in, you want to be popular, but it's like, I tell this to my kids now, when you're in high school, high school is your world. Absolutely. But after high school, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter. Right. Like it just doesn't matter. And I remember mm -hmm. I went to school with, I have to say, some pretty mean, mean girls. Yeah. I didn't even realize at the time just how mean they were. It's like looking back, you're like, oh, hmm, okay. Um, but yeah, I would tell myself, don't, don't care. Don't give yourself any more time being upset about, you know, what they say about you. Being different is cool. And I, what I tell my son, because he always says he's a nerd. My 14 year old, he's like, I'm a nerd because he, he's really smart. He's skinny. He's got the braces like I did. And I always say, Matthew, the nerds are the ones that when they're older, they get the girls, they make the money. It's like, they're the, it's true. you know, a lot of times. So like, I, that's just what I would tell myself. It's like mm -hmm. high school is not the be all end all of, mm -hmm. of life. It's such a small, yeah. finite part of your life. And when you're in it, it's so super serious. Yes, absolutely. Everything gets better right. from here. It's such, yeah. there is nothing that you can't get, get that you can't come back from. Right. But, you know, we all did. We went through it. I was teased as a kid and, um, you know, just friendships. Now, I really feel my advice to anybody out there with even adult friendships would be don't chase people. Oh, absolutely. You know, if somebody mm -hmm. wants to be your friend they will make an effort. Mm -hmm. There's, I think that you should, if you want, if you really like the person, you like their company, value their friendship, you do make some effort, but it has to be reciprocated. Otherwise right, it's like, it's not worth it. Sorry. It's like, yeah, that's just, it's life is too short to go after relationships, whether it's a romantic or friendship that's just not being reciprocated. Right. So for advice for myself, for friendships, I remember in high school, I was always very big on, I didn't understand why people wanted to be friends with me. Like when, I, when people were friends with me, it was weird because I never internalized that they were friends with me because they liked me. I was always thinking about what was wrong with me. What, 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 what were my flaws really? that I was too annoying that I talked too much. So I was always constantly watching those things about myself. And that was what I was thinking about was how can I not be these things that I think are wrong with me? And that was all I thought about. So when it came to relationships, mm -hmm. you know, my early boy relationships, my friendships, I never really thought about the impact that it would have on them, my choices. Mm -hmm. It was always about me. Mm -hmm. It was always about what, am, what can I do to not be something or what can I do to be something. And it, it was, it was more manipulating the situations around me based on my own perspective and not really 
thinking about my friends. Mm -hmm. It was weird. So it ended up like in high school, the friends I ended up in high school with, we ended up stopping being friends. They broke off because of some choices that I made that were really, really bad and inconsiderate when I ended high school. And it's a long story, but I made some extremely inconsiderate choices and I lost my entire friend, my entire friend group at graduation. Um, so it was, it was really hard and it was because I was so incredibly self-centered. So that was a huge learning experience for me going into college with nobody. Um, and it was Mm. because of my own choices Mm -hmm. and my own self, you know, staying in my own head. So I had to figure out how I was going to get out of that. And that was a big learning experience for me trying to figure out all of that, that it wasn't always about me. And it came from me not having good self-esteem. So what I would tell myself is just to believe in yourself and that people are hanging out with you for a reason. People are your friends because they like something about you and they wouldn't be around you if they didn't like you, you know, and that's what I would tell myself. I think I just internalized things too much and I thought too much. Did you have anybody like picking on you like I did? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because that does number on your self-esteem too. It's like somebody tells you something enough. Like I was always much taller than everybody. I'm 5'7", but I mean, that's. For a girl, it's tall, and I was just much taller than yeah. my peers, and I was very, like, my son is very, very skinny. I was, like, I had no body. I was, like, straight up and down, stick skinny, so people teased me for being skinny and tall, and yeah. um, I had, like I said, I had bad skin, so that, yeah, yeah you start to believe, like, you're, you're hideous, you know, you, you tell that to yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and mine was always you're annoying. That was always the big thing. It was always you're annoying. And, you and now we much. get told that on YouTube. And I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> now we're like, we get exactly. all the like, backlash, yeah. like, I mean, all the critics. Absolutely. <laughs> Same thing we're saying about relationships, mm-hmm. you know, believing in your own worth as a human being and yeah. letting it go. If someone doesn't I, like who you are, not taking criticism to letting heart. it go and I trying think. to, yeah. And it's okay if mm-hmm. someone doesn't like me. And I have yeah. to keep telling myself that even now, it's okay that not everybody's going to like me and it's all right. And that well doesn't said. make me a bad person. You're so right. So Absolutely. Yeah. Covered yeah. a lot. <laughs> we did. We did. We went over a lot today. And yeah. then at this point, I really want to hear what you have to say on these topics and advice you would give to your younger self or just advice in general that you see, you know, friends making mistakes or, or friend, people in your social group making mistakes. I would love to know what your thoughts are yeah. uh, down in the comments because, you know, we are the collective brain. And even if we're not only talking about makeup, which we can talk about makeup and skincare because we need to talk about those. But, you know, it's, it's interesting to hear people's point of view. So go down in the comments, make a friend, have a conversation. And and thank you so much, Risa, for being on thank my channel. Thank you for coming over. I and thank you for having you me on your here. channel. Yeah. It means a lot to me. I'm so glad I got to know you better. And we definitely got to know each other better mm-hmm. through this conversation. And we just yes, had so much fun today. We did. We went out to lunch and we hung out. And I will link her friend Michelle's channel down below as well. Oh, I yes. just got to meet her. She is yes. incredible. I haven't watched any of her videos yet. But based on her personality. I said you're going to love her. And you guys need to check out her channel for sure. She helped on the video that we shot when I did uh, on my channel with Michelle's with Michelle with Jen's makeup Michelle was our kind of our what do you call it, videographer yeah. she was helping uh-huh. us with the lighting she's and amazing. she's so funny and so kind and she just definitely please go check out her channel yes and make sure you check out Reese's channel yeah down please check out my channel well. the one that, the one that we did this makeup look yeah uh, and and I think you're really gonna get a lot of value out of it so thank you again so much for watching mad love to you and I will see you and Reese will see you yeah. in videos very very soon bye, bye.